Hi, I'm Catherine. Welcome to 3 Ps in a Tab. Today I'm going to show you how we increase the storage space inside our 2021 New Camp Tab 400 closet. This was definitely our bravest and boldest trailer modification. You might not realize it, but inside this wardrobe locker, there's about six inches of deep available space behind the back panel of the closet. We build an interior bookshelf style shelving unit and then cut three openings into the back panel of the closet. We got the idea for this modification from a May 2020 tab forum post by AWOL. The post provided some great photographs for inspiration and clear basic directions and measurements. To complete this project, we spent less than $100 on materials like a redwood board, birch plywood, glue, sealer, screws, jigsaw blades. And because we were brand new to woodworking, we also purchased a jigsaw for about another 150 bucks. For the project, we purchased a 12 foot redwood board. It was about five eighths inches thick and seven and a quarter inches wide. At the lumber yard, we had it cut to six inches wide and then we used that one and a quarter inch strip to make a dummy. It took about two weekends and some after work weekdays in the evening to finish this project. It was difficult and it was challenging and we made a few mistakes along the way which we'll share with you at the end of the video. But overall, we're pretty proud of ourselves and we're definitely happy to have the extra storage. in a tab. So first thing we're going to do is clear out the closet and we're going to take that panel out. We took these little covers off from the little areas there. Right there. Oh, there's one right there. You just pull it out, take it out, expose the, um, the screws there. Now, for this project, we need to cut this wire, add some speaker wire, connect them with a butt connector somewhere here, and then it should be about the size of this blue wire. These are the things we're going to need. Butt connectors and a spool of speaker wire. We are going to cut right about here. There. Now we're gonna strip the wire split it just like this and now we are going to clean that insulation off so that we can then put the butt splice right in drive so that one will go with the white cable part and this one will go with the copper color one. Okay I've got these two wires already hooked. Now we're just gonna measure 
so that we can get approximate size to the wire. That's the, uh, the blue and white wire. So it's probably about, about, probably around right here. Okay, so now I've connected this side with this side and made it long enough where we can go ahead and then put the shelf right here. In this image, you can see how we used our remaining one and a quarter redwood strip to build a dummy frame and test our measurements. We just cut the wood into the sides of the shelf and then the shelves. Three pieces, actually four. Bottom, top, and two in the middle. Right now we're trading the wood. Here we are getting ready to uh, and do our, uh, our pilot holes before we uh, put the shelf together. We're putting the uh, top and just making this square. Now what happened here is we took too much, we took too much out of it. And so now we have to add at one eighth, one eighth inch plank to uh, even it out. Now in the pictures coming up, you will see our efforts in fixing our mistake. We glued it, we nailed it, and we let it sit there for at least a day. Now in the next picture, these are the screws that we are going to use to hold the shelf in place and the polyurethane that we used to uh, treat the uh, shelf. Well, the shelf is complete. You can see this, this is where we fixed our mistake. We added about one eighth, one eighth of an inch in order for it to be snug. Now, when you put this in, it has to be snug in between these two pieces of plywood. Okay, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna Before cutting holes in that precious piece of new camp plywood, Catherine practiced the measurements and cuts on a large piece of cardboard. Then we transferred the measurements to the back panel and used the jigsaw to cut three openings. Now we are at the latter stages of putting this back together. You have to take that out. If you don't take that tube out, um, it won't come out easily. Here's the finished project. It isn't perfect. Cutting the curves with the jigsaw was difficult, and we chipped the veneer in a few places. But we're pretty happy with the final look of the project. Catherine put some collapsible cubbies into the shelves. She also purchased two sets of the smaller REI packing cubes to store lesser used stuff like hats and scarves and swimsuits. There's even some room for extra camera and audio gear back there. For Oscar and I, who had never done a woodworking project before, we did make a few mistakes. 
The first mistake involved measurement. Even though we made a dummy frame first and we slid that dummy frame in and it fit perfectly, when we built the actual cabinet and tried to slide it in, it was a little bit too tall, it didn't fit. So we figured, eh, what happened? Maybe we were just about one eighth of an inch off. Oscar removed the top of the cabinet, cut one eighth of an inch off each of the sides, and we reinstalled and built it again. This time when we slid it in, it was too short. Guess how short? An eighth of an inch short. So our original measurements were actually correct. Since then, we've learned about a woodworking term called turf, which might have explained the discrepancy. But what we should have done, we learned, was just sand off the top of the cabinet until we were able to slide it into place. Instead, we had to go back to the hardware store, purchase a 1 8 inch slab of MDF. Oscar cut that to a 20 by 6 rectangle and glued it on the bottom. You can see that in the video where he corrects that mistake. Our second mistake wasn't actually a mistake. It was just a lot of inexperience with the jigsaw. We didn't really realize how hard it would be to cut curved corners with the jigsaw. I really wanted the corners around that rectangular opening to be curved to kind of mimic the curves in the trailer. But looking back on it, I think it would have been a lot easier if we had just cut straight corners. I'll put up a diagram of the exact measurements we used to cut that panel. We did do a cardboard practice piece first. I know that the openings were six inches high from top to bottom, and we had four inches of space between the first and second opening and the second and third opening. So the measurements were great this time around. The problem was when we flipped it over to use the jigsaw to cut the curves, some of the veneer split from the front of the panel. And that was a little disappointing. When we flipped it back over, we noticed all the splits and we were a little bummed. It took a lot of sanding with a Dremel tool to kind of smooth it out. And we did have to go in with some wood putty and fill in the little patches where the veneer had split. We have since learned that you can put painter's tape over that line that you're gonna be cutting to kind of hold the veneer in place, but we didn't have that tip when we did our project. Looking back again, I wish we had just kept the corners square. It would have been a lot easier for us. Even though our little back of the closet secret storage spaces did have a few imperfections at the end, we're pretty impressed for our first word wicking project and we really do love having the extra space. We did this project right before we went on our summer cross-country road trip. We were gone for almost two months and it really helped to have an extra storage space that was accessible for storing things like sun hats and swimsuits, camera gear, flip-flops, water shoes. It's a great extra space that you can definitely capitalize on. We're really grateful to AWOL for sharing his ideas on the Tab Forum post and we'd like to echo their words of encouragement if you're interested in increasing your closet storage in a New Camp Tab 400, you should just go for it. We're definitely glad we did. Thanks for watching and happy camping. <laughs>